This video is for all of you coaches and service providers who particularly provide some kind of experience or healing or transformation to your clients, but you don't teach as much to your clients, or at least you don't think you do. All right. So before I give you ideas, by the way, I want to encourage all of you uh, who would like to um, comment below to share uh, if you are a coach or a healer or um, you don't see yourself as a teacher or you didn't, uh, comment below with um, your best or your one of the best pieces of content that you've created. If you've kind of overcome this block, this limiting belief, if I may say, of coaches can't create content, coaches aren't supposed to teach. I am a, you know, or or maybe you're a healing facilitator or some kind of a spirit um, uh, experience facilitator. Like I don't teach, I, I I facilitate experiences. Oh really? Okay, all right. If you've overcome that block of well, I don't teach. Uh, and then you've started to create content, please comment below with one of your best pieces of content so that others can, can benefit from your example. All right, so first of all, the coaches and other experience providers who are not creating content consistently, to you, I say that you are holding yourself back from a much greater potential that you could have both in your business, but also personally as just a fully actualized um, human being. Now, why do I say that? Well, because, um, well, let's talk about the business part first, because I think that's or easier to understand. Um, we all know that uh, those who are more top of mind, the service providers who are more top of mind are the ones more likely to get clients, right? And what's the, what's, what's, What's an easier and most and also most noble way to be top of mind is to be creating content consistently because then you're always adding value in the social media space or to your email newsletters or on the internet in some way. Okay? You're always adding value. You're you're adding uh, ideas, entertainment, your own personal expression and stories, etc. So so definitely by creating content consistently, like I try to model, you get clients consistently as well, or more likely to. Well, and I, I'm, I've been doing this stuff, co consistent content since at least 2015. And ever since then, my, you know, client base has gone up, 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 up um, every year and waiting lists, etc. So it's obviously good for business. But let me now talk about why briefly, and then I'll, I'll go into content ideas for coaches. Okay, I'll, I'll share that with you. I'm not a teacher, I'm a coach. All right, let's talk about that. But, but the second idea about why content creation is so crucial for reaching your greatest potential as a human being, as a self-actualized, a fully um, sort of authentically expressed human being, is that when you articulate your experiences your ideas, and also the experiences and ideas of your clients, obviously keeping them anonymous. But when you articulate, when you practice articulating ideas and, ex and sharing experiences, you practice expressing yourself authentically, right? And by doing so, you also hone your voice. And you could literally, if you're speaking, you hone your voice. When you're writing, you hone your writing voice. Um, or if you're using art and images, you hone your creative voice. And by doing so, you connect a lot more ideas in your head and out in the world, you know, because the, the way to become smarter is to create. If you're not creating as, and publicly sharing, you're greatly holding yourself back from that potential of becoming smarter um, and becoming uh, more articulate and authentically expressive okay so that's about being a self-actualized human being everyone should be creating content I, I i'm i'm serious every human being who is able to all right should be creating should i don't want to like um judge be judgmental but i really just think that every human being who can 
who does something in the world, and especially in terms of work and succession to helping others, can reach more of their potential by creating content consistently, whether it's writing, speaking, recording, art, whatever it is. Okay. So the other thing, a third reason, right? Business, good for business, good for your self-actualization. And third, it's good for humanity, right? So instead of um, people, uh, you know, people post many shallow things on social media, things that are not, you know, things that are maybe entertaining or whatever, that's fine. But when you share of your authentic experience um, and learn and practice articulating things at first, well, to me, I feel like I'm always doing it imperfectly, including this video, right? Doesn't matter, doesn't matter, imperfectly, just do it. Um, you, you add more valuable experiences and stories to humanity, to the consciousness of the world. And you may, you know, positively uplift and impact other people, even if they never buy from you or hire you or like your thing, you're, you're positive impacting humanity by doing so. So hopefully <laughs> by this point in the video, you are more convinced. I'm trying to, not trying to persuade you, but hopefully you're more inspired to say, okay, even if I'm a coach, I'm not supposed to teach people. I'm not supposed to be a subject matter expert. I'm, uh, uh, or maybe I'm an experienced facilitator. I ex facilitate healing experiences. I don't teach. Okay. By this point, you're like, well, maybe I could. Maybe I could say something. So let me give you three ways to create content. Okay. Way number one is the next time you are with your clients, okay, or with your group of participants that you do some healing for, the next time you're with them, notice what comes out of your mouth. Notice any word or phrase that you utter. Really. I mean, you could literally record yourself. You know, you, you're not recording them. You just use your phone or whatever, put on voice memo or, or record yourself and, and notice what words and phrases come out of your mouth with a client. Now, um, I'll take a hard case, right? Let's, let's, say, let's say that the coach will, will, will argue with me. George, I don't teach or consult with my clients. I help them discover their answers by asking powerful questions. Oh, really? Okay, great. Those questions themselves are content. Hello? Okay, like whatever is uttered out of your mouth assumes some context. I mean, first of all, let's say you were asking a client some kind of question to help them elicit some answer from themselves. Well, when you are asking them the question, there's already some context that you and the client have gone through that makes the question meaningful. And the coaches, please comment below with examples of a powerful question that you, you know, more questions that you ask your clients so that we can actually give examples here. Cause I'm a uh, <laughs> little known secret. Maybe I've never gotten any coaching training. I've never gotten any training as a coach, a teacher, consultant, mentor, you know, never gotten any training at all, never taken a class. However, I have worked with many, many coaches. I mean, I started really in 2009 um, as, a, as a marketing consultant, consulting for coaches. Okay. So I, I know the whole coaching, you know, ICF, uh, you know, and, and other um, sort of frameworks, uh, you know, probably better than the average person. So I know you're supposed to not teach, not give advice, but you give powerful questions. Now, that, that any question that comes out of your mouth has a context for why does that question matter? Why, why are you asking? Why does it matter? Okay. In what situations could that question apply? For example, that question could apply to help someone discover answers for their relationship or for their work or for their uh, personal growth or for their health challenges or whatever, okay? So you can literally, if, if it's a single, I'll just take one single question, okay? Why does that question matter? And how is that question applied in various situations that you could illustrate to say, well, this is why the question matters. And these are the possible, here are a few examples of possible answers that might come out of the, the client. And this is why it helps them to move forward. 
right? I mean, right? So, so like I said, anything that comes out of your mouth has a context that as you describe that context, why it matters and what is the possible, you know, pathway that is led from that question, that's brilliant content. Okay. So that's way number one, like I said, is record yourself uh, so that you can notice whatever utterance comes out of your mouth. I'll give you, I'll give you another example. Okay. Let's say you are a spiritual group experience facilitator. I'm not a coach. I'm not a teacher or teacher or consultant, George. I, I facilitate healing experiences in a group. Fine. And I can't create content because it's all experiential. Really? Okay. Let's record yourself. Let's say you, I don't know, what you he, you facilitate some experience and you ask people to do some kind of exercise. That's content right there. What's the what's the purpose behind the exercise? What is the root um tradition that the exercise came from? Why, what kind of benefits does it have? Um, what kind of examples have you seen of people who use that exercise or that experience and how has it you know, manifested uh, some kind of difference in their life, right? Or you might speak some kind of mantra or some kind of, you know, any kind of guidance. I mean, if you're facilitating experience, you are giving guidance. Well, am I going to come into your experience and, and you not saying a single thing? And I'm just like, well, I don't know what to do here. Of course, you're saying something. So all of that's content, right? So that's that's way number one is record yourself in in a client experience. And notice what comes out of your mouth and write or speak about the context. That's all content, number one. Number two, and I have to look at my notes here because I took some notes here. Um, number two is even though, uh, um, even though uh, you are not supposed, okay, actually, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm going to back up a little bit. I'll, I'll say that the second way is to, now I said the first way is to record yourself, right, and study that. The second way is to record a client or group session experience. Now, I know it's all kind of confidential, all private stuff. There's intimate things that are shared in client sessions. However, some of your clients may and, and, and participants may be open enough for you to record it as a sample for others to know what it's like to experience coaching or to experience this healing group experience, okay? And if, um, you know, you can even give them a, a you know, bonus by saying, hey, uh, you know, you could tell a client, listen, what, let's say a client you, you, you believe would be open to something like this, right? Then you ask them, hey, could I give you a free session? Yeah, a free session or same thing with group participants. Hey, I'm going to create a free group experience for the purpose of recording a sample of what it's like. So the client knows it's being, this client participants know it's being recorded. And number two, that it's going to be a sample. So encourage them to <laughs> not exactly ham it up maybe, but, but just to be aware that others are watching or are going to be watching this to understand what this kind of experience is like. So have them have them encourage them to be more expressive in other words so that they can you know it's it's more it's more interesting thing to watch instead of so much processing just inside their own head but just to express more of what they're processing what they're experiencing so that's the second way is to record again some of you know and if you don't have clients to to ask this or or you're shy about asking your clients ask friends Post it on social media, your friends, your Facebook friends or Instagram or wherever you're on social media or email a couple of friends. Hey, could I, uh, could you do me a, a favor and allow me to record uh, if you want to, you know, get, would you be willing to allow me to record a sample session of what it's like to work with me? And so record those and you don't, you know, uh, obviously later on you can watch it back and go, hmm, are there particular segments that are interesting, well, you can cut out those segments and use that as content, whether that's video content or podcast content, or you could transcribe it into some kind of blog post. So that's the second very powerful way because when people see or hear or read an actual experience of what it's like to work with you, and you can keep doing this again and again and again, you might, you might really 
kind of catch this wonderful bug of sharing experiences. I mean, you you probably, if you follow my YouTube channel, I have lots of these clips. I usually uh, take my clients off screen for privacy purposes, but you'll see in many of my videos, I'm essentially answering questions that literally I have clients there on the call, um, and usually in a group program, I'm answering a question or a challenge that they pose. Some clients are happy to be on screen and I ask them that and they're happy to. So you can see these examples on my YouTube channel. Okay, that's the second way is sample sessions or group experiences recorded uh, you know, as, as to, to give people um, a real grounded context for the work that you do. Um, and by the way, those sample sessions don't have to be like all about selling. It could, it could be some, some useful experience that the viewer or the listener can feel some kind of healing from it or some kind of uh, uplift or benefit from, from watching or, he or listening to that sample. Okay. And then the third way, the third way is this. Even though you tell me that you don't give advice as a coach or you don't teach, you don't, you're not a subject matter expert. The reality is that sometimes you do give advice. Let's be honest about it. Let's say that you have a client who's really, really stuck. Yes, you, of course, I know you ask powerful questions and you give them, you walk them through exercises, which by the way, are content as well. It could be online courses when you lead people through exercises. Anyway, so sometimes the client's really, really stuck and you just have a gut instinct that you know what if i could just offer a few possible possible ideas for ways to move forward maybe they could pick from one of these or they can have a, additional ideas based on what i suggest you probably have done that every almost every coach that i know has done that to some extent well that's content right there because the reality is this i mean no matter how much you want to be purely question asking and exercise facilitating and no, no answers from me, only from you, dear client, no matter how much you're like that, okay? You still have a belief, a framework for how to move forward in life. Meaning, okay, let's say you, um, let's say you are a relationship coach, right? Or let's, let's say, um, I'm going to use leadership as, a, as an example, might be a little easier to understand. Let's say you're a leadership coach, okay? You don't tell people answers, you listen from... And, and one of your clients is, okay, so I think what I'm going to do, I think my answer is that I'm going to have to just um, be more harsh with my, uh, my employees. I, I, just have to, I just have to make things more painful for them so that, so that they'll just have no choice but to. And, and, and you as a you know, conscious leader of consultants, as you know, I mean, maybe from the studies you've read and from the training you've gotten and from the clients you've, other clients you've helped, you know that there's, there's chances are there's a much better way forward than causing more pain <laughs> or suffering to employees. I'm, I'm using this as a facetious example, right? Causing more pain. And so you might say, you know what? Um, could I, could I, can we see if there's an alternative way of doing it? Because, because you have some framework in your mind for what's a harmful way to move forward in the world and what's probably a more beneficial way to move forward. You see what I mean? Don't be so, don't, 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 you know, let's not kid ourselves that you're completely neutral and they, you don't mind that they go kill people. Obviously you don't, you don't want them to cause suffering, right? You want them to cause more positive uplift and transformation and, and con connection with others, right? So you have a framework for that. Yeah, yes, you can ask powerful questions and guide them and you try not to tell them the answers, but you do have a framework. Of course you do. And so that framework, if you're willing to admit that to yourself, that's content right there. Talk about various parts of your framework. Why? Why? You could talk about why bosses should, uh, you know, why you don't believe it's helpful for bosses to use punishment <laughs> to try to motivate their, their employees. I mean, that's a kind of an extreme example, right? But you know what I'm, I'm saying? There, there is a framework. Uh, I'll, I'll, I'll say, um, I'll use the relationship example. I brought that up earlier. Let's say someone says, oh, you know, that means I have to just be more, um, I have to nag my spouse more. I think I just have to keep reminding them that, that you know, this isn't done, this isn't done, this isn't done. And then they'll finally do it. Isn't that, that's my answer. <laughs> you might say, well, you know, maybe you have a framework that relationships work better when the, the person practices deeper listening, practices, you know, um, physical affection, what, whatever it is, you have a framework for it. 
Talk about that framework, even though in your client session, you're trying not to give them the answer in your blog posts, in your videos, you can certainly talk about your framework. Because by the way, the person who consumes your content and gets inspired by your framework is an even better client, is even better fit for us as a client. So let's stop kidding ourselves and say, coaches can't create content. Come on. I just gave you three very useful methods to discover. Well, I, I guess as a coach, right? how can you discover those answers from within yourself? Um, anyway, I hope this is helpful. And like I said, last thing, please uh, feel free. Those of you who are coaches and experienced creators who are not supposed to teach, you just facilitate experiences, right? Comment below and give us an example of one of your best blog posts. Um, maybe something that clients found helpful uh, or just did particularly well, blog posts or videos or, or uh, podcast episodes or something like that. So that way it gives others some examples of, of what to work off of. So thank you so much for joining me for this. And I look forward to your comments below. Thanks.